Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to my podcast or my YouTube channel. I'm Will Caminata, the multidimensional guide, and I'm here to help you awaken, heal, and expand your consciousness. Today, I'm bringing a conversation episode, and I had the absolute pleasure to talk to Sarah Hall. And Sarah is an international spiritual teacher and angel channeler. She is the creator of widely celebrated guided meditations, spiritual YouTube videos, and the podcast Through the Eyes of the Angels. She specializes in communicating with the angels to guide people into living an empowered life by holding a consciousness of love. So I met Sarah through YouTube. She has wonderful videos on YouTube all about the angels and the ascension journey. So this is what we talked about. So if you're interested in learning more about the angels and the ascension journey that we're currently going through and how the angels are helping us in this ascension, you're going to love this episode. If you enjoy it, please share this with that one friend that will love this episode as well. Enjoy the show. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Thank you, Will. I'm so happy to be here. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I'm very excited to talk to you. All things angels, the ascension journey. Um, you have wonderful videos on YouTube. That's how I got to know your work. And I'm just going to start telling everybody to check you out and if they haven't checked you out, check you out that they should. You have wonderful content, really helpful and needed for this time. Before we get to the juicy topic, um, I'd love to know a little bit about your spiritual awakening. How has this been for you? And maybe you can link to how you started working with the angels. Yes, absolutely. Well, my spiritual awakening actually started really young, really early for me in my life. So it started when I was about 15 years old or so. Um, at that time, I had my first spiritual channeling experience. Um, and it was really quite strange. And if you can imagine being so young, um, you know, you, you'd be really overwhelmed by by something like that. So I'll give a little background on what happened and how that led me to working with the angels. So when I was about 14, 15 years old, I was talking with my friends, we're having a sleepover. And like teenage girls do, we're talking about seances and <laughs> thinking, let's have a seance, you know, it, it'll be really fun. Um, you know, we're going to see what happens. And at the time, I didn't even really believe in what we were doing. It was sort of like, oh, this is fun. You know, we're, we're just we're just having some fun here and seeing what happens. It's almost like it was a little bit of a joke, but we were but we were taking the steps that we thought you should take if you were to have a seance. So we went um, into my friend's attic and lit candles in the middle of a circle we all held hands in the middle of a circle and we were calling on the spirit world to come through and to give us messages and to see what would happen and all of a sudden a really really strange feeling came over me so i started to feel a little bit disembodied i had this strange vibration this tingling feeling this opening feeling throughout my body and my mind and i became disembodied because it felt like part of my consciousness was rising up and maybe even out of my usual focus where it feels like you're right here anchored in your body i was up and out and once i got that feeling of being up and out there were these energies that started to come through. And these energies started to create these fluttering and vibrating sensations in my throat chakra, around my mouth and my tongue, and even around my eyes and my eyelids. So 
The first big thing I started to notice after this was that my eyelids were fluttering and um, my eyes were moving, sort of like when you are in REM sleep Mm -hmm. at night when you're dreaming, you know, your, your eyes move around. So there was a part of me that was aware of that. And I was like, I wonder if my brain waves are different right now because my eyes are moving. That's really strange. But you know what? I'm going to let it happen because I kept sticking with this intention, this idea of now I'm really interested. Spirits come in. Let's do this. Let's communicate with the spirit world. Next, after my eyes were fluttering, my my mouth and tongue started to move. Um, and I had this feeling almost as if words wanted to come out. And so again, I started to give that permission. I started to focus my intention on that. And I started to say to myself, okay, yes, we're allowing this to happen. We're relaxing open, let's do this. And words started to come out of my mouth. At first it was just like a few isolated words here and there. And then words started to come out that sounded like a different language. At first, that different language sort of sounded like it was maybe light language. Like, I didn't know the word light language when I was 15, but now I know the word light language. So it was like this really clear sort of not not a real language, but this clear sense of there's these interesting words and sounds that are that are coming out and they just seem to match the energy and vibration of what's coming through. Then after that, the words actually started to take on the sound of a real language. And to me, again, 15 year old me at the time, it sounded like I was speaking German. Mm. And in school, I never studied German. I took French classes when I was when I was young from the time I was in like eighth grade, you know, through like high school or early college. That's the only language I had any exposure to um, other than English. So to hear these words where I was like 15 year old me was like, that sounds like German. That's funny. My friends were there and they're totally into it. They believe, oh my gosh, we're communicating with the spirit. Um, And they start asking questions to me, to to the spirit, you know, and the spiritual entities answering in German. And of course, none of us understand (laughs) any of the words that are coming through, but then I started to get images in my head and it felt like I was awake. I was sitting up, my eyes were closed, but I was dreaming. It was exactly like I was dreaming. So I was dreaming and I was seeing these images of hills and then I was seeing images of soldiers walking by and then I saw images of someone who um, was buried like a soldier that passed away and died Um, and I was going wow that must be what this this spirit is communicating about. After a little while the energy just sort of like died down and began to rest and we kind of came out of like the, the seance. And I asked my friends about the whole experience and they were really excited. They were buzzing with interest, like, oh my God, that was crazy what happened. And they told me that they also had pictures and images that came up in their head. And their images were really similar to the one that I got where they were seeing like this landscape and they were seeing like, one of my friends just saw like people marching and walking and just saw their legs walking past um, really similar images that made it seem like maybe this was a soldier, you know, that that had died. So that experience exhausted me literally after that. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I was thinking. It was <laughs> yeah. a lot. <laughs> It was a lot. I My whole body was bone tired and exhausted. And over the next like two years or so, I was every once in a while having these experiences where I would start to feel really ungrounded, really out of body. I would pick up on the energy of spiritual entities sometimes, but it was confusing. It didn't feel good. It didn't always come in when I was inviting it and asking for it. It was like I had this spiritual presence like knocking on my door all the time um so that started to kind of freak me out and make me feel a little scared so i shut down the gift Mm -hmm. i was basically like no no more of this 
Yeah. I'm even going to tell myself, I don't believe in this. I don't want to do this. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Um, later on, you know, this is probably when like the real part of my spiritual awakening really started to happen. I was going through a lot of things, you know, like in my late teens and early twenties where I developed, um, anxiety, depression, I was having panic attacks. I was having all kinds of issues. So I was going through like a healing crisis, um, like that breakdown to breakthrough type of like crisis period of life, dark night of the soul type of thing. And one, I had someone tell me, I was telling someone about how, what went along with these, um, anxiety attacks was that sometimes at night I would get uh, sleep paralysis and it feel it would feel sometimes like I was being psychically attacked again mm. like there's these energies or entities that are like around me or there's this just this heaviness there's this density that I'm connecting with at this really deep almost like soul level of being when I'm asleep so I had a friend tell me well you should call on the angels because that's their job to protect and at the time I was, even though I was raised Catholic, I was like, angels, I'm not religious. I don't believe in that. That's stupid. But the next time I was in a sleep paralysis, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to try it. This is so uncomfortable. And I called on the angels. I said, angels help me, you know, mentally in my head. And all of a sudden, uh, I, it was like I was kind of out of body. So my eyes were closed and I was like in this sleep paralysis, sleep type of state, but I could see my whole room. I could see the entire room. It was dark. You know, I could see the furniture. I could see everything. And while my eyes were closed, I suddenly saw an angel, a being that was made out of pure light. The light was white and gold. Yeah. And this being was holding what looked like a sword or like this long, you know, kind of energy, this long beam of light in his hands. And I looked at him for a second and then all of a sudden um, I was able to open my eyes and I was able to kind of be awake and aware. And then I saw like the silhouette of him. He was still there, even in the physical world with my physical eyes. Mm -hmm. And I saw um, that light, that energy flash and skitter across the room. Sort of like if someone takes your picture and the flash is really blinding. And then for a second, you're seeing these little um, sparks in the room, these little you know spots in the room. So I saw all of these lights in the room and the light seemed to be chasing out the darkness, all of the heaviness, all of the anxiety, all of that difficult type of energy. Um, after that point, I never had another psychic attack ever again. I never had sleep paralysis ever again for the rest of my life. This was when I was maybe 20 years old, 19, 20 years old. And actually I never had a panic attack again after that experience. Wow. So I obviously was very interested in the angels from that point forward. So mm -hmm. I wanted to learn everything about them. And that's when I think I really started to awaken because I started to call in the angels and actively pursue what it would be like to learn how to communicate with them and mm. to work with them closely. Um, and now here I am um, 16 years later, six, yeah, 16 years later, and I'm channeling the angels and I'm working with people, you know, so that they can learn how to how to connect with the angels too. Wow, that's amazing. That's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it seems like all of your clairs were just waiting to be awakened. And in that one session, it seemed like all of them <laughs> awakened, right? And that can be, like you said, powerful, but also exhausting. And the second time, when you just had the intention to work, you know, to have help and assistance, assistance, they, you know, they showed up for you. Um, how was it after that? Because you mentioned that you were a little bit skeptical about working with the angels and maybe, yes, there's this religious connotation, even I guess the, the image of the angels as well, which is a, a question that I'm curious to, to ask you too, um, because we have this idea that the angels are human-like with wings and 
maybe that's kind of the you know the religious depiction that we've been given or maybe not so I, i'd like to to uh hear from you what you think but also how how did it how did this path go for you from you know getting rid of this concepts and these ideas that you had and actually getting into the 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 real truth of the angelic realm yeah so from that point forward i wanted like i said to learn everything that i could about the angels so i started to read a lot of books about angels and sometimes you would really get that religious perspective which i didn't really like um you know again for me at that time i wanted to really go in a different direction than the that religion that i was brought up with mm -hmm. um but some of the other books were really interesting and really mind opening because I was introduced to ideas such as, you know, angels exist apart from religion. They are beings that don't care what your religion is and they love everyone and they'll work with everyone. And that really resonated when I would come across information that seemed, um, you know, like it, like it was true or like it was supportive of my relationship with the angels, I would get this strong heart experience where I just felt like everything was opening up. And then I would instantaneously apply the information to my connection with the angels. So I would call in the angels after maybe learning something about them. And I would ask them questions. I would ask them to give me messages. I would ask them to intervene in my life and help me to heal certain things. And I think for me, that's where the proof really came in and all of the doubt started to go away. It was because I was having direct personal experiences with the angels that gave me this clear sense of, yes, they are real. Um, they are beautifully loving beings and they're here to help us. Um, so one of the big moments that actually happened with that was also in my my very early 20s and i was visiting some friends and sat, suddenly got started getting some messages from the angels for them this was at a time when i was doing a lot of like meditating with the angels calling in the angels so they were really with me i was really my third i was really tuned into them all the time already and my friends were having um some kind of a discussion regarding you know, like whether or not they wanted to have a baby. It was a married couple. Like, should we have a baby? Should we, what should we do with our life and our plan and like everything? And all of a sudden these messages just started to drop in. And I was like, you know what? This is so different than it felt before when I was channeling, I don't know what spiritual energy where it was kind of like invasive and it was very pushy. Instead, this energy was purely loving. It was very like asking for my consent and just giving me, the energy and the information and showing me, you know, you can share this if you want, if you don't, you know, we can step back, but you know, we're just giving perspective and you're hearing that perspective. So tentatively, I started to share some of the input that I was getting with my friends and right down to the name that they were thinking of naming the baby, which was like Pearl, uh, that information came through. And that hit me because I was like, whoa, I had no idea of knowing that they were talking about, you know, having a child and maybe that it, they would just wanted one and that um, they really wanted a daughter and that they were thinking about the name Pearl and all of these different things. These were the, like the specific details that came about that were happening behind closed doors. Their, their conversations previously, they had covered all of these things and now I'm telling them these things. But I know it's not coming from like me, it's coming from these angelic beings that are watching over them. And these angels basically just wanted to tell them, everything's okay, you don't need to worry, you're on the right path, then that's all that we want you to know. Um, so that's when I got really fascinated with the idea of giving angel messages for people because I could see that, wow, that really helped them, it made them feel excited, it validated so much um, from like the, the sense of this being a spiritual choice that they were making for their life path. And I became very passionate about the idea of trying to serve in some way so I think the thing that really cemented my belief and helped me to like heal the doubt part of it was seeing 
this stuff really works and I can help people with this. And if I try, um, you know, giving readings and at first I just did it for friends, you know, just mm-hmm. casually for fun. Um, it can help people. It can be something that's really beautiful and really profound. And I'm really, really enjoying it. So that I think really was a, a turning point in my relationship with the angels. Right. And how did you develop that channeling? Um, did you just start asking for more guidance or did you just meditate more? Yeah. So uh, there are a few things that happened. Um, First off, as I was working with the angels, they were giving me a lot of personal guidance for my own life. So I was receiving little messages at first, such as, for example, you need to meditate and you need to do a very traditional disciplined form of meditation where your goal is to be present is to really focus all of your energy in the present moment. Um, Doing that not only helped me to heal from the things I was mentioning, like the anxiety and the depression and that kind of thing, I feel like I was being guided to totally reprogram that. But it also, that healing also came along with clearer abilities to receive messages from the angels. So soon it wasn't just like little words or little signs that were coming in from the angels or little visions here or there in special moments. It was okay. Now, now that I'm getting clearer, I can tune in whenever I want and I can ask for guidance. And I know that I'm going to get something out of it. Um, After that, I got really interested in the spiritual communication side of things. So I uh, took a few classes on that just to kind of learn things like, what are the clairs? You know, how do you open up the clairs? Um, What's the difference between like mediumship where you're communicating with deceased loved ones versus like spiritual channeling where you're communicating with spirit guides and angels and, and other types of beings. So I wanted that education. I got that. And every time I did a little bit of learning, like took a class or something like that, it helped me to really level up with my confidence. So over the course of a few years, you know, during like the first half of my twenties, basically, I was doing a lot of practicing on my own, learning directly from the angels and then studying, you know, taking classes or reading books and doing these different things and then practicing what I learned on the people around me, on friends and family and things like that until I got to the point where I felt like, okay, now now I feel confident in it. So it took some time, um, but all of that was really just worth it to discover the the gift. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really important that you share this your story and and i relate to it too because i feel like the combination of gaining awareness knowledge then practicing and then being open to it you know but really showing up i think it's super powerful and like you said you know you were learning things in a traditional way but also showing up for the practice and i i personally think that if one does that like there's no other way like they're going to to get the connection yeah absolutely i totally agree and just just a a, a quick question about um this this image that we have of the angels how do you how do you feel about that what what's your perception or your concept that I love that question because you're totally right at what you're kind of alluding to angels aren't necessarily beings that have like a fixed form or image to where they are always going to look exactly the way that religion or art tells us that they should look like humans you know with with wings they since they're non-physical beings can sort of like shape shift. They appear in whatever images basically you need to see in order to understand, okay, this is an angel I'm talking to. And number two, also to feel um, safe and comfortable with them. So this was really interesting because during the beginning of my, my learning to connect with the angels, my 
go-to angel to connect with was Archangel Michael. I called on Archangel Michael a lot. He's amazing. And I was always trying to see Archangel Michael. I close my eyes. I want to see you. I want to know what your face looks like. Having the expectation that, you know, it's like seeing a person. They're going to look a certain way. They're going to have a certain image about them. And it was interesting what I saw. So he showed me an image of himself and I did not see him with wings. I just saw him with a big aura of that kind of like white gold energy, maybe a little blue energy that was swirling around in there too. But when I looked at his face, his face reminded me of my brother. And not exactly like my brother, but a lot like my brother, really similar to, to my brother, who's someone that I can talk to really easy, someone I'm really close with. And I was like, oh my gosh, you look like my brother, Nick. Oh my gosh, that's so strange. Um, and he communicated to me, yeah, I, I'm naturally, because I'm relating with you, I'm naturally showing up in a form that represents safety and friendship, companionship, brotherhood, all of these things that I'm trying to exude and express to you. So it's interesting because I got this vision or this feeling almost like the bond of energy that was moving between our hearts or between, you know, whatever the soul stuff is inside me and whatever the soul stuff is within Archangel Michael was creating this, this like, just sort of like the symbiotic flow of energy and almost like a movie theater projector. It was like my need to connect with someone in a way that was going to bring about all of the type of connection that I wanted with Archangel Michael was projecting this image forward that made him look and he was willingly wanting to look and to appear to me in a way that I would be receptive to that I would have no fear towards that I would feel love and openness and good feelings towards fast forward. I hear the angels now telling me over time, you know, as I'm trying to work with what do the angels look like and I'm getting clients that are asking me questions about what do the angels look like and, you know, how do we work with them and that kind of thing. And the angels tell me a few different things. For One of the first things they tell me is we don't necessarily have like physical wings, like bird wings around us. They're saying, they explain to me, well, it's just that that's how early human beings would depict us because the aura around angels, the energy around angels moves at a really high frequency. Mm. It's moving so fast that it reminded early human beings of the fluttering of a bird's wings. Um, fast, like you could imagine like a hummingbird's wings moving that so fast that it's like buzzing. There's just this buzzing, moving type of energy. Um, so it's just an artistic representation to see them with wings. And they know that. They know that wings and feathers is something that we mentally associate with them. So they'll use our language to communicate with us so that we feel safe and then so that we can recognize them and understand them and work with them. So mm -hmm. they'll often send feathers to people as a sign if that's what they need. Sometimes they'll show up with that image of wings if that's what that person's heart needs to project out and create in their connection with the angel in order to understand that it's an angel and feel safe with that angel so they don't necessarily have those wings and it's interesting because now now that I'm, i've been working with the angels for a long time i don't necessarily need have a need myself to see them in a specific way so now i'll see all kinds of different things when I'm connecting with the angel. Sometimes I'll just see a big eye um, or maybe more than one eye. Sometimes I'll just see light and color that's fast moving and flowing. Um, and that just gives me the sense of like, okay, this is this is the angel that's with me right now. I can feel which type of energy is coming through. And that's that's all that I need to see. But yeah, basically, since they're non physical, they can they can shape shift and they can express themselves in so many different ways. Yeah. And as you you were talking about the birds as well, what came to my mind was the bird song, you know, and, and we also have this idea that the angels sing, you know, we have that idea of the the choir of angels um and i and i think that's how i personally experience them too um because i'm also a singer um and so through sound i feel connected to them and that's my personal feeling i i feel like they're 
beings of light, beings of sound and sacred geometry as well. And so it makes sense what you're saying that they can shift forms and, and shapes because that's what sacred geometry does. And right. Yes. Is it because I've heard this before, is it um, possible that they will also embody a person or some kind of material thing in order to help you say you need to be saved from an accident they will show up in that one second and i don't know do something to help you is 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 that correct to say from your experience yeah um so that's a big yes and it's interesting cuz sometimes when um we're talking about angels i i'm feeling them here and i'm kind of feeling like this little energy coming in and I'm hearing a chorus of yeses um, coming in from the angels on that question. So the answer is yes. And they're reminding us um, that they are also like these multidimensional beings. So if there is a need based on the role that they're playing and guiding us as human beings, if there is a need for them to become embodied, to be really, really present, to focus fully in the physical plane, the physical dimension of being, they can do that. They can come into physical form and they can connect with us. And, you know, it's so cool. There are so many stories from all around the world, from all different times of angels doing exactly that, um, you know, a lot of times it'll happen in hospitals. Like, I can't tell you how many of these stories I've read about or heard from people where, you know, someone was having a really difficult experience in a hospital. And then, you know, like a nurse or a doctor came into the room and was helping them and made them feel so good. And then they wanted to talk to that nurse or doctor later and thank them or send them a card or something like that. And everybody said, nobody of that description works here that doesn't it that's not a person that works here at all um so yeah they absolutely do that um when we need it and when we're receptive to it and when that exactly fits into whatever role they're supposed to play for us yeah that's beautiful and then that gives us comfort and you know the knowingness that we are safe that we are guided that we are protected um, and you mentioned that they're obviously multidimensional beings. Um, have you ever had any kind of information as to which dimension they operate from? Anything in that sense? I really like that question because I personally will hear about or read about the different things that people will talk about in like the spiritual community regarding like oh there's all these different dimensions and we can identify which specific dimension is which so we're moving into 5d or there's nine ninth dimension there's 12th dimension there's all these different places and just me and my personality I feel a little overwhelmed when I think about that and it makes me feel a little bit like what does all of that even mean and how do we measure all of that. Um, so what I usually do when I when I want to get a sense of deeper knowledge and information is I'll ask the angels directly. And when I've asked them questions about that sort of like dimensional stuff, um, they communicated things to me that they knew I think would really um, resonate and make me really purely understand. So instead of giving me like a number of this is the dimension, because I know that for me, if I got like a sense of like, this is the exact dimension, then I would get really confused and also really curious. And I would say, well, now I need to know the structure of all of the dimensions and what context this dimension you're, you're talking about has based on every other dimension in the universe. And I would just start to tailspin. So because I don't know that that information is supposed to be part of necessarily my path at this time, the angels just described it to me this way. They said that they are in a dimension, a state of being that is first off incredibly high because their consciousness is pure love. They also explained that the source of all creation, the source of this universe is a force that is that love so is the thing that we human beings call love that we recognize as love and we we sense it as just sort of like a feeling or an idea but really it's an actual 
force. It's a creative force. It is the spark that gave way to all of consciousness. They exist in a dimension or in an energy field or in a, in a, in a plane of being that is right next to that pure source. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they resonate, they live and they resonate in these, um, amazing layers of energy that seem like they expand outwards from that highest, highest plane, that original source plane of pure source. So there's some angels that seem like they're in a really, really, really high vibration that actually always stay in this sphere of dimension and energy that is directly next to Mm -hmm. adjacent to that pure source energy and the purpose of these angels of these these forms of consciousness is that they're here to essentially witness the thing that we're calling source they're here to witness the divine miracle of reality of existence they're they're witnesses of like god if you want to call it god and they are basically in this kind of almost like what we would call like a raptured sort of state where there's just this rapture and bliss where it's this talk about eyes showing up sometimes when you see angels it's just sort of like a great big eye it's like this witnessing eye of awareness that is seeing and feeling and blissfully um you know just sort of holding space for the fact that creation exists and then as you expand outward from that the energy starts to diversify more and more and more. And you've got these angelic being these, these high forms of consciousness, these angels that will actually start to um, travel and move their focus from one plane of being like these really high planes of being out into other planes of being, you know, all the way to like the human, um, you know, like we could say 3d plane of being and they mm. they can be aware simultaneously in the 3d while being, um, aware at this really, really high level while, while remaining kind of like anchored in that core heart of, of the universe. Yeah. So um, that's, that's sort of like the explanation that I've received when I, I myself have asked questions about this to where it's like, all I know is it's a really, really high plane of being. And that interestingly, because they're so rooted or anchored in that high plane of being, they can travel anywhere. They can focus themselves anywhere. They can access anything. And they're adding in a message for us right now. They're saying, and you human beings can too. It's just that you don't always know it because you're so embodied in your, in your physical world right now. But you know, you're know you slowly waking up and learning to do the same thing that we do. They're saying it's not that special what we do because really you're all programmed to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks for the message. <laughs> um, I feel um, the same way. Like, I feel like the angelic ROM is is a, a plane or, or an energy that's very close to source. That's how I feel. And the way you described it is perfect because I, I feel like because they are so close to source, they can travel, right? And they can go through all the these dimensions if you will but i wonder and and i have a question for you that sounds linear thinking because that's how we function and i understand that nothing is as linear as we may think um but is there any type of hierarchy when it comes to the angels because as you were talking about you know those beings that are close to source and maybe they travel through they can work in the lower dimensions here with us but then I, I i was thinking about you know the archangels and the guardian angels so is there any kind of hierarchy and if so could you explain to us in a linear way because that's how we understand yes <laughs> absolutely um that's another one where i myself have been super curious about that so i have asked the angels directly about that topic and you know the simple answer is you know yes um maybe not like hierarchy in the same way that we think of sometimes human beings think of hierarchy where it's like some things are higher and better or yeah like the king sure. and this one's this one's more powerful and this one's better and this one is different um in truth they they do have um there's a variety of 
different purposes that different angels will fulfill. So like I was starting to describe, there's some that seem like they stay anchored really, really close to pure source. And they are basically like waves of high consciousness that are realizing reality, that are understanding and witnessing reality at these really different levels of being. So the first one is this exalting, blissful, excited, just like this outpouring of, of ecstasy, right? Um, so that's like this really, really, we could say like a high, really high hierarchy because it's so close to that, like just that pure source. It's realizing source in this way that's just like, this is a miracle. This is, this is sacred, 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 miracle, miracle, miracle. That's all their energy even says. It's just ex exuding that, it's expressing that. Um, and then as you go out, um, according to the angels, you start to experience that consciousness, those waves of consciousness that emanate from the pure source of love, um, express itself in these different varieties of ways. So you start to see angels that rest in a state of pure peace, for example, like their purpose is to witness consciousness, to be the witnessing space that shows like the pure stillness and peace, that plane of massive like a, like a void, we could say, but it, it's just like the stillness, it's pure potential. Um, sort of like, you know, like the soil is this massive plane in which you can plant any seeds that you want, and then seeds can grow up out of it. You know, the stillness is sort of like this massive plane into which you can plant any possibilities to create conscious forms, like, you know, like thoughts and, and concepts or like other type, types of creations. Um, and they're witnessing that the stillness around it, they are the consciousness that inhabits the pure peace of that stillness and witnesses that. And then you kind of go down and you see even further angelic beings that basically are, are like the conscious witnessing forces that see consciousness and reality source energy now starting to express itself out into all these different dimensions. So you have the pure source dimension and it starts to express itself, um, maybe just to bring it down to our level into more of a physical way. There are angels that watch over and that witness the very universe itself, like really, really big expressions of reality, like uh, like galaxies and, and star systems and things like that. They're just like this big, big witnessing energy that holds space for that and that radiate out waves of, 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 of that love we see that is the source of all um, into these things. Um, then we have angels that, you know, start to inhabit, um, we could say even more grounded planes of being like the archangels and like the guardian angels who really work with human beings a lot. Um, th those are the, the ones that I think when people think about working with the angels and calling on angels, it's usually, usually going to be the archangels and like the, the guardian angels that you're connecting with because those are the ones that are focused on us as a particular expression of consciousness, a particular expression of God. They're here to, to witness us, to guide us, um, to protect us, and to work directly with us on our, our spiritual purpose, which is to continue to see the expansion of that pure God energy, that source energy coming out into reality. Um, mm -hmm. They're actually giving us an interesting little analogy. So I'm going to, I'm going to share it and hopefully it can make sense. Um, they're saying, you know, your, your scientific theory, humanity scientific theory of like the idea of a big bang, where it's like the universe starts with a big bang and then it's expanding out and it's expanding out. They're saying, I want you to try imagining consciousness like that so that the source of all consciousness is like this core, this heart of the universe. And it is this, it is in this state that is expanding out um infinitely and timelessly beyond you know what we think of as, as like linear time um it's expanding out infinitely and the closer you are to that light the closer you are to like just like the blazing force of that energy and then as you go farther and farther out you see the particles of that energy expanding out and you see these different forms of creation that happen the more and more that you expand out and actually consciousness will continue to expand out infinitely from here and we're part of that we're at like at a leading edge place with all of that mm -hmm. humanity exploring and awakening being the awakening of god in in whatever dimension it is that we're in right here yes. so angels i guess from their perspective they they like to be present in all of these 
these planes. It can be multidimensional, just as they say that we can be. Um, and mainly it's going to be like the archangels and guardian angels that are super focused on us because that's that's part of their interest and their purpose and their passion is to be to be with us. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect analogy of uh, the Big Bang because it gives that sense that we are connected to the source and it's all connected. Even if for our linear mind, we might think, oh, there's there's an energy that's even higher than the archangels and even higher and even higher, but it's all really connected. So I love yes. that. Yes, it's connected. And it's not like one is, is better than another because it's all about each each thing is playing its own role just like if you have a tree if you want to have a whole tree you have the roots of the tree you have the trunk of the tree you have the branches you have the leaves you have all these different parts um but no one is better than the other because they're all part of the whole thing and they're all playing a role mm -hmm. yeah and speaking of playing a role i'm i'm curious about how did we get to um to this idea or the concept, I don't know if that's the right word, but we we have this, again, for our linear mind, we have this idea, you know, that one angel will help you with protection, another angel will help you with, I don't know, your heartbreak, um, sort of like roles for different categories of angels or arch archangels even the guardian angel is like you have one that will protect you through this lifetime how how did we get to categorize i guess <laughs> the yes. energy of the angels that is such a great question so according to the angels they show up for us in exactly as we were talking about before in exactly the form that we need so as they sort of like stand at our side, stand present with humanity, watching humanity awaken over eons and grow and develop, they're witnessing how our consciousness is expanding and growing. And what we can see about human consciousness is that there are all these different archetypes um, that seem to come about through the human experience. Um, so there's, you know, experiences like being wounded and needing to be healed. So because there's this archetype, this universal archetype, this aspect of human life that has to do with being wounded and needing to be healed, we have a healing angel, mm -hmm. an angel that has decided to show itself, to express itself um, in exactly the way that we need in order for, to receive support on that area of life an angel whose consciousness is purely focused on the divine truth as it can express itself in the idea of healing which is so cool so then you think of these all these other things that you experience when you're in a, an earthly realm when you're in this dual realm where you can experience polar opposites you can experience what it's like to be really safe and you can experience what it's like to feel like your safety is threatened so because of that of course there's an angel that shows up and represents protection an angel who masters all of the knowledge all of the divine knowledge and channels the divine knowledge pure from the heart of love the heart of source of what it means to experience that that you know safety versus not safety in this world and how to transcend um you know that the duality basically mm -hmm. how to transcend that duality of whether we're experiencing safety versus not safety and, and and rising to that that kind of like higher core truth um so angels show up in all the different archetypes where there's something important to us as human beings for life because they're basically they're here to serve our growth and development and they're here to serve our peace and to serve our awakening into the consciousness of love our remembering and waking up to the fact that we are god we're all pieces of god expressing itself you know god is expressing itself through all of us right here so they'll show up in every way that's relevant to the human experience mm -hmm. yes yes that explains a lot and when you mention archetype even the planets right have the archetype we have a healing planet and like venus is the, yes. the love planet so it makes total sense how about um the gender of the angels because we when we say for example archangel michael or gabriel we immediately think of a male image or, or a male energy 
how do you see this this topic when it comes to to angels from what the angels have taught me they don't have genders actually they actually totally don't have genders because if you think about it they um first off they're non-physical beings so they don't have bodies in the same way that we do so there's no need to show up in one gender or another and stay fixed within that you know kind of state um it all boils down to what we were talking about a little bit before where um human beings sometimes need to see whatever being they're relating relating to in a way that they can understand so we'll put our spin on things we'll put our own interpretation on things sometimes because that's what makes it easier for us to digest easier for us to understand so when we think about the angel of protection for example i think that I guess culturally, um, for a long time, people would associate the idea of pr protection with with men, with the idea of like the most one of the most beautiful expressions of masculinity and the masculine, you know, like human masculine archetype, which is like men protect men, men create that feeling of safety, right? Um, so I think that's why Archangel Michael became depicted by us by the way that we're seeing him through our bias through our lens as being like male that doesn't mean that he's male or that he is a man or that he is only associated with male characteristics it's just that that's how we've kind of needed to see him to understand him from our own perspective as our culture evolves though as our culture expands and as our conscious awareness of gender expands too we're going to be able to relate with the angels in all kinds of different ways. I think it's also really interesting to think back historically on the religions that really paid attention to angels and to see that most of those older religions, which were patriarchal religions, right? Um, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, etc. Um, only saw male angels. They were like, there's no possible way that you could be female. I can only possibly see you and conceptualize God, you as God, male. God yes. Amazing. <laughs> has to be male, has to be a man. So again, they, that's that's what that's the only thing that they were open to seeing at that time. And yeah. the angels are going to work with us and love us and connect with us regardless of our level of awareness or of our level of capability to understand. Mm -hmm. So if that's how we're going to interpret them, they're basically just going to show up, um, you know, and, and try to work with us to help keep on expanding our um, our understanding out. So mm -hmm. it's interesting because sometimes people ask questions like, what pronouns do you use when when talking about angels? Anyone you want they don't care they absolutely don't care it can just be whatever feels good you know to you personally so i'll say he when i refer to archangel michael because habit and mm -hmm. and that's how i've seen archangel michael sometimes and i really like the idea of an angel that you know kind of embodies things that people really associate with some of the like the most beautiful expressions of masculinity i think that's pretty cool um, and there's other angels that i might refer to with a pro pronoun as she but i'll always do it with the idea that these are beings that transcend gender why mm. because they're not of the binary plane they are not beings of the plane of duality yeah. of hot or cold of male or female of right or wrong or yes or no of day or night everything we experience here comes through the the polar you know kind of like um dual realm because this is this is a realm of duality and then there's this huge spectrum of course that exists between the two dual extremes but they're not of this realm so they don't have those things they just appear that way because that's how everything appears to us when we're wearing these colorful glasses that see everything as as dual yeah so it's, it's interesting yeah and I guess there's something to be said for the, the the masculine and feminine energy integration as well that goes beyond gender. Like both you and I, we have female male energy, and I guess they represent the union of those two energies, right? Um, I've I've had um, someone in my podcast that talks about female archangels. Um, her name is Claire Stone. I'll even put the link in case anybody wants to watch. And um, I, I think you enjoy that too. Um, and she says the same thing, like they're gender ge genderless, but this information came through her in order for um, us to awaken the divine feminine within each of us. 
and understand that you know the angels they they really go beyond any gender so i thought that was really interesting absolutely it's so fascinating what you said too about the, like the the masculine and feminine within within us as human beings because since we are of this dualistic plane and human consciousness is rooted inside the earthly dualistic plane we're not going to we're not going to get outside of the fact that we're we're dealing with dual energies and those dual energies are inside of us every single human being i agree with you has like 50-50 masculine and feminine energy inside of them and different proportions of how those energies will express themselves how those energies will you know sort of um will 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 flow and there's absolutely from a collective humans uh standpoint a a rebalancing going on between those those gendered energies and when we say gendered i think it's I think it's important to say that we're not necessarily referring to what we think of culturally or biologically uh, as this is male and this is female. We're thinking more of things like like yin and yang, you know, like like giving energy, which we would say is like kind of like on the masculine spectrum versus receiving energy, which is maybe more on that like feminine spectrum. Um, we all have equal forces of these energy inside of us. And it's absolutely true that a big part of our evolution right now um, involves a reawakening of the feminine energy. And hey, cool thing about duality is if you pick up one side of the coin, you know, feminine side of the coin and it's awakening. You're also picking up, picking up the other side of the coin. You're picking up the masculine side of the coin too. So it's reawakening too. It's just doing it, you know, in, in response to this, this rise of the, that feminine consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And this ascension journey that we're currently in, I guess one of the main themes is actually that union between ego and spirit, feminine and masculine energies. So I just wanted to ask you quickly, because I want to be respectful of your time, but just wanted to touch on the ascension topic quickly. And maybe if you can talk about, like, in in summary, what it is and, and how the angels help us in this ascension journey that we're going through. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love this question. Um, my very down to earth way of trying to um, simply describe what ascension is, is I like to call it humanity's awakening to who we who and what we already are in divine truth. And I think it's important to establish that because I think that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of like woo woo information out there, uh, you know, in the spiritual community. And I love, I'm a woo woo girl. So I love a lot of it. I don't judge any of it, but sometimes there can be, I think some misconceptions for people around the idea of ascension where they're thinking, you know, ascension is about escaping our humanness. It's about going to a different dimension. We have to, we, then we get to leave all our problems behind. I'm going to like vibrate off of the planet and not have to be human anymore. Um, from everything that I've learned in working with the angels and, you know, in coaching people spiritually on the ascension path, I found that that's definitely not the case. And that the idea of ascension isn't not necessarily new. Um, you know, this divine potential that we have inside of us, us, this idea, like we were talking about, that we are all expressions or pieces of divine source has been here forever. It's, it's part of our ingrained nature. And this awakening that's going on, you know, has been going on for a long time. It's just that we're seeing like a bell curve, like this really big influx and growth of collective ascension that's accelerating in this particular period right now, which is really exciting that we can all be a part of that. And as we're awakening to who and what we, we are in truth, basically we're awakening consciously, we're awakening in our awareness so that we can become aware of more aspects of ourselves and of reality then maybe we were focused on before when the primary the greatest amount of our focus was completely rooted into like the the, the 3d or rooted into the physical world like i'm just a, a physical person looking at the physical laws of reality and you know looking at my sense of self being rooted in my name and my story and my ego and what i experience right here as we're ascending as we're awakening our consciousness is basically you could imagine almost like a light like the, the the light is inside your heart and that's the presence of divine or presence of source that light's getting brighter and if you imagine a light getting brighter 
you're starting to see more of what reality really is. So if you are walking around like a giant warehouse with just a little candle in your hands, you might just see a few feet in front of you, but you might just see like one little object at a time as you're shining that, that candle around the space. Ascension is sort of like, now we're turning on this light bulb that makes gives us the equivalent of feeling like we've turned on all the lights in the warehouse all the lights in the ceiling like tons of them are starting to turn on and then we're starting to realize where we really are we're starting to see all of these things about reality and see oh i'm not just a physical being i'm a spiritual being i'm an eternal being i'm a multi-dimensional being i'm connected to this higher aspect um you know of me and i'm also realizing huge Part of ascension is awakening to the realization that we are all one i'm not just one isolated separate individual self if my awareness is expanding out and getting more of that bird's eye view more of that full look at reality then what i'm able to see is that i'm literally one with every other human being on the planet that my good is their good that's to serve is to serve someone else is, is to really serve the self to give is to receive so that's why i love what you're talking about where it's like you know a, ascension has to do with sort of like marrying and balancing things like masculine and feminine or ego with spirit and that kind of thing because what we're seeing is sort of like wow if we're one and to give is to receive then we're kind of transcending a lot of the old structures that held into place a sense of separateness we're starting to transcend and unify or harmonize those dual things that were so part of the separate consciousness and move into one again that's that's more unified so i think it's exciting it's so beautiful and this is one of the best times to be alive because i think there's so much flowering and blooming for that that kind of ascension work that's happening right now yeah yeah beautiful i love everything you said and it's wonderful to know that we have assistance right we have yeah. i think more and more we are awakening and discovering that assistance is and has always been available whether it's you know through spirit animals or nature spirits or the higher dimensional beings or the angels i feel like there's so much help available for us now um and so the work that you do working with angels is beautiful because it reminds us that we're not alone and we have that assistance and anyone can work with the angels right yeah so i'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your work and and how if anybody's listening or watching and they're like i i want to work with the angels i want to be like her i want to channel i want to learn more about it how how can they go about that yes well first off you're totally right absolutely anyone can work with the angels because the angels watch over every single one of us and you can't imagine how much love they have for all of us I have found at least on my own path and journey that they're some of the most amazing beings to work with because they're in this consciousness that's so high and that is so pure love that you know that the information, the guidance that you're getting is coming from this really beautiful, healing, loving place. Um, so I'm a big fan of working with the angels. And if you know anybody's watching would like to, to work with the angels are feeling that calling to awaken to that, um, know that that's some Something that you can absolutely do and it's something that i teach in my angelic ascension coaching program as well as in some of my my courses that i have and over on my youtube channel i release videos on this topic all the time um, if you're someone that wants to go really deep and learn how to channel the angels and really see what it's like to work directly with them on your ascension path on your awakening which will involve lots of beautiful healing and all kinds of you know learning then you can go to ascensionwithsarah.com um, and read a little bit more about uh, what it's like to work with me and the angels on that path. That's wonderful. And as usual, I'll put the links in the description so that people can easily find it. Just before we finish, I'd love to ask you some final questions. They're, I call them fun and deep. They're quick questions. 
and you can just answer whatever comes up for you. Is that okay? I love that idea. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So first one is, what is your simple definition of ascension? It is the awakening to who and what you really are, and it's realizing that you're God. Yes, yes. And Sarah, what brings you joy in your life? The simple things bring me joy. I found that the older I get and the more that I grow, I find joy the most out of really simple, everyday, beautiful moments. Nature brings me so much joy. Connecting with people I love brings so much joy. Food brings me joy. Music, singing. I, I, I'm a singer too, so I can totally feel you on that. So it's it's the simple stuff. And you can bring so much joy, I think, in through through anything, just in everyday life. Yes, I'm very much like you. Yeah, the simple things, especially food. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so hypothetical question. Imagine that all of the books in the world were going to be destroyed and deleted forever, but you have the power to save one book for humanity. Which one would you save and why? Oh my gosh, that is a really tough question because I love stories. You have no idea how passionate I am about stories. Um, you know, I would probably save a story that's really, really universal. Um, something, something that involves a journey. Like I would, I would have to sit down and think about it for a little while, but I would probably choose something like, like the Odyssey or like, um, you know, there's so many versions of the Odyssey, like the like the Star Wars um, story is basically the Odyssey, like the Wizard of Oz is the Oz Odyssey. Um, you know, all of them, any story that's about a human being going on a journey and experiencing all of those big archetypes, those main experiences of human life, I think would be really amazing to, to save because if you go deeper into these stories, which are so enjoyable, um, yeah. so exciting, any adventure story like The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, it do, you know, it doesn't matter. Any any big adventure story, journey adventure story, you're going to start to see a lot of like deeper hidden layers of of, of spiritual truth inside yeah. of it. Um, so I think I would probably save something like that. I guess it's a yeah. that's a really good question, a tough question. Yeah. I love it, and I love The Wizard of Oz. I have. I have my wicked mug. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love that. What a synchronicity. <laughs> yeah. And I was also thinking about the alchemist. Um, I think it's a yes. story that has a lot of archetypes in it. Like you said, if you go, you can, you can see things from a different perspective. Um, what is the one thing that people would be surprised to know about you? Yeah, you know, actually, I, I alluded to it a minute ago, but um, that I'm a singer, I like to sing. And that actually, the first part of my path, I never expected to be like a spiritual teacher. I didn't think this was where my 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 path was going. When I was younger, I was into musical theater and opera, and I studied opera singing in school um, for many, many, many years. And that's where I was totally focused on going. It's just that spirituality also came up. And now that's such a big part of my life too. So I'd say that that's probably the surprising thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It, it's very similar to me too. I, I started really? with singing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't think I would be a spiritual teacher, but I think it's very connected and yes, I just feel because you're so connected to the angels and you were, you mentioned opera. I could just like see you as a as an angel, as a nurse. Oh, earthly. thank you. <laughs> uh, last question is called Three Truths. Um, and I got this from Lewis Howe's podcast, which I love. Oops, and I, I think the audio just cut out for me for a second. Can you hear me? I can't hear you yet. It's it cut out right after you said three truths. Okay. And I'm not sure what that is. You know what? Let me try. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. I can hear you now. I try. I tried just switching my headphones. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. 
So the last question is called Three Truths. Um, I got it from Lewis Howe's podcast, which I love. And it's also a hypothetical question. So imagine that many years from now, you're about to make the transition from this physical realm into the spiritual realm. And everything that you've built, all of the work you've done, all of your videos and books, they've been deleted. They've been destroyed too. So all you have is a piece of paper, a pen, and you can write three truths, your three truths. This is what's going to sort of live on for your family, your friends, and humanity. So what would be your three truths that you would leave? The first one would be be love each other because loving each other is where the biggest spiritual lessons and truths are going to come through we're all walking each other home so in our relationships and our human to human connections if we can focus on loving each other that's one of the most important truths my second truth i think would also have to be about love so In this one, it would be that love is the greatest healer. So love is the greatest medicine in the world, meaning no matter what suffering you're going through, love has the power to heal it and that it's, it's literally unlimited, um, you know, in its, in its ability to, to heal. Yeah. Let me think of what the third one would be. I think again, that this would probably have to root back into love and i think this is going to be one of the most important things and this is the thing that i think i've spent the most amount of time teaching um in my whole life and all of the work that i've done with my my clients and my students and and different things like that and the thing that i worked on the most for my own healing my own path it would be love yourself Mm -hmm. love yourself because if god or source or divinity is pure love when you love yourself, you're opening the gateway to the divine. You're opening up your personal doorway that literally leads to God, that literally leads to, to, to divine truth. And if you want to share or experience or expand divine truth out in your life, um, loving yourself is like an art form. It's like a, a, like a journey that you're on your entire life, being in a relationship with yourself and learning to anchor love into it. That's going to bring some of the, the the greatest growth that you can possibly imagine. Yeah. So those are my three truths, my three love truths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Good. Love is all there is. Yes. I love That's that. Wonderful. Sarah, thank you so much. I want to acknowledge you for your beautiful, bright energy and for your commitment to your work to help humanity to raise the consciousness of the collective and just thank you so much for sharing your light oh my gosh thank you so much will you are so kind and same to you big big thank you i'm so honored to be connected with you and so honored to have had this conversation with you today thank you likewise Thank you. Much love. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode. If you would like to learn more about Sarah's work, you can visit her website, www.ascensionwithsarah.com. You can follow her on Instagram at sarahhall444. And please make sure you check her videos and her guided meditations on YouTube. They're awesome. You can find her by just typing Sarah Hall on YouTube, but you can also find all the links in the description. And once again, if this has brought you value, please subscribe to my podcast or my YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. When you do that, you help me to expand my podcast and my channel, but you also help them to expand their consciousness. As always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open, and let love lead the way. I love you. See you in the next episode.